Hi everyone, the day that this video is being released is Friday the 29th of March 2024. And as many of you will know, especially if you are living in the USA or if you're American, today is also National Vietnam War Veterans Day in the USA, a day when we particularly remember those that gave their lives during that conflict. Now, you may be wondering why I'm coming to you with something about the Vietnam War. I don't live in the USA, I'm not American, but I do have a story that I want to share with you about a Vietnam War veteran. And so to do this, I'm now handing over to my friends Hugo and Tony Booth from Guernsey in the Channel Islands. Hello, my name is Hugo and I'm an amateur historian here on Guernsey and an avid collector of military antiques. Not too long ago, I just so happened to have picked this incredible piece of military history up in an auction house here in Guernsey. Now, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that's, that looks like a Vietnam era helmet. And I've always wanted one in my collection. But the more research that me and my father did on the helmet, the more that we realized that there's a much more special and much more interesting story behind it other than it just being a Vietnam War era helmet. This story starts during the Vietnam War in 1969 when a young soldier called Jeffrey Rupp was very sadly killed in action during an offensive around the Cambodian border. He ended up passing away on the hospital ship home. The reason why we know it was his is because on the insert, which is the Kevlar insert of the helmet, it says his name. Well, his second name, which is Rupp. And it also says on the back of it, vote Nixon with the peace symbol. What I find quite interesting about this is you can tell that it's original graffiti because there is um, corrosion from the from the bolts or the um, the rivets that goes over the graffiti so you can tell that it's corroded over the graffiti and another poignant thing about this this story is the age that Jeffrey Rupp was when he passed is the same age as my older brother which I, I find is it's it really hits home because I know that if I lost my older brother to to war it would be devastating to not just myself but the rest of my family. Also for my son being at that age as well and yeah. the family grieved for him at the time and uh, it was a tragic story. Mm. But there were several Rupps that fought in the Vietnam War and the reason why we know this one is Jeffrey Rupps from what my research showed was that uh, one of them was in the Navy and one of them joined in the 70s uh, but this one we know that Jeffrey Rupp was in the 101st Airborne and we know this is an airborne helmet by the chin strap that separates it from the infantry and uh, other branches of, uh, of the forces. But this helmet's got a, an even more interesting story as to how it ended up in Guernsey. Because we also know that uh, the helmet belonged to the, uh, the Hollywood star Oliver Reed, who used to live in Guernsey. And he gave the helmet to a friend over here who sadly passed away and the friend's brother put it up for auction. So how this came from a battlefield up on the Cambodian border to a charity shop auction in Guernsey over its 50 year journey is an incredible story in itself. But Hugo, my son, what he wants to do, um, the helmet really should be returned to the family. Uh, we know roughly that they live in Wisconsin. Uh, that's really all we do know. Um, so yeah, we are interested to get this artifact back to them because uh, that's where it belongs. Yes, and yeah. um, I'm sure they'd love to have it. So our main plan for, for this helmet is we, we would like to start a crowdfund for me and my father to go over to give it back in person. As I, I personally believe that I, it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to them. And I'm just holding it and keeping it safe until we can finally give it back to them. And any money that we gain, which is extra from what we need, will go straight to the Purple Heart Foundation. And the Vietnam Veterans of America as well, spit yeah. the money that's left over between yeah. the two. And did you say you've actually traced the family? Yes. Roughly. They're, they're in yes. Wisconsin. Um, that's all we know. Yeah. He was in Ohio, first of all. From what I can remember, he's buried in Ohio, but is remaining family in Wisconsin, mm. we believe. 
Um, so you haven't actually been directly in touch with No, them I, I, I don't think we should be in touch until we get more information because we want to know more about how Oliver E got hold of it. We know it was a film prop, um, so obviously he got it from a film set. We'd like to know which film, uh, how he obtained it and who he gave it to here in Guernsey. So we can cover the Guernsey side of the research, which we're doing. Uh, but we just like some help from people in the United States who, who might know more about Rupp would be very good or, or know more about the process of, uh, of um, how to actually find out more about funding even. You know, it's, uh, it just has to go back. One way or another, this has got to go back to the family. And uh, I'm sure they will treasure it. We, we love to have it. Yes. It's, it's a beautiful piece yes. of military history, but they will treasure it as mm. part of their sons or their brothers or yes. yeah. their sisters or whoever's left of Rupp's family yeah. and um, yeah. they can keep it and know that that belongs to their, their relation who died in combat doing something for a cause. When you actually got the or when the helmet came into your possession you didn't know that it belonged to Rupp at that point no. did you? No. No, it was only when know. you took the, no. the cover off and yes. then you discovered it. Meant it. Nothing. it yeah. meant nothing at all. Uh, Rupp on the front meant nothing. It's such, a, it's such an unusual surname, even in, in America. Um, that's what made it easy to identify, to yeah. be honest. There's only a handful uh, yeah. that saw combat in Vietnam and none of them were airborne except for him. Yeah. Yeah. How did you feel when you saw the name? How did you feel? Well, I, I feel like you, once you have a piece of history like this with a connection to the previous owners or owner, um, it, it brings a lot more personality and a much more personal connection mm. to the object itself um, and I feel like there's much more that can be done um, if it has personalization on on the actual piece itself and and I feel, yeah sorry to yeah. it's also such a tragic story mm. which we yeah. had no idea about we just knew that Rupp really existed he was mm. in the airborne mm. and further research showed that it was it was such a sad story because only mm. six weeks into his 12 month tour of duty and he was killed mm. and um, in a particularly vicious part of the Vietnam War yes. up on the Cambodian border mm. and um, he even you know, survived the initial blast, he died later on. Yeah, he stood on a landmine, sadly, and um, that was it. And you actually have a photograph of him, don't you? We do, yes. and, and that's an interesting story in itself, because the black and white photograph we have of him in, in uniform, uh, I did some research to try and find pictures of him. This one turned out to be the original photograph used by his local newspaper of his obituary and it was still there, still online, and for 15 or $20, dated 1969 on the back of it, dated with the, the newspaper name. So we have the original picture that was used for his obituary and his original helmet. Wow, some things are really meant to be, aren't they? Yes. It seems like it's one of those stories that's coming together where you feel, you know, it's, um, it's, it is meant to be, and this has to go back to his family, yes. no two ways about it. Of course, yeah. But we just need, we need the funding to get from Guernsey via the UK because you live on Ireland uh, to Wisconsin or Ohio and to physically give it to his family. And Hugo, I yes. noticed that you are wearing a blank dog tag yes. there. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, there's a very specific reason I wear a blank dog tag. Um, it's, it's to remember all the unnamed and unidentified soldiers who have fought throughout history um, because I always feel like it's good to remember them and it, it's very important to remember them because even though they haven't been identified they still fought for us and um, fought for our freedom. Thank you Hugo and Tony for telling us all about Geoffrey Rupp and his helmet which you acquired in a charity auction in Guernsey and also what it would mean for you to be able to go over to the USA and personally give it back to the family. If anyone is able to help in any way whatsoever, then I'll put all the relevant links, including the link to the GoFundMe page, in the description to this video and also here on the screen. Now also, as an addition to this story, last October I spent some time in Washington DC. So whilst I was there, I decided to go and visit the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, which honours the men and women who served in the Vietnam War. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial chronologically lists the names of over 58,000 Americans 
who gave their life in service to their country, including the name of Geoffrey David Rupp, who died at the age of 20. Come with me as I search for Geoffrey's name on the memorial. Here we go. Rupp, Geoffrey David, 17th of January, 69, W3429. So that's where his name would be on the memorial. So here we are at W34, so somewhere on here is the name of Geoffrey Rupp, and here he is, Geoffrey D. Rupp. I will say that was the best part of the movie. Not gonna lie, I kind of forget him. I feel like last year, like last year, 